Hey everybody, before we get into today's episode, I want to take a minute to introduce our latest service called Crowd Insight by Gadgetflow. It's an awesome tool we made to help you get honest feedback for your upcoming crowdfunding project. Some of the big results we've seen include increased conversion rate, finding out why your project isn't performing well, and getting feedback you need from potential backers. So please head over to gadgetflow.com slash crowd insight to check it out today. You can also find a link in this week's show notes. Now let's get into the episode. Hello world, this is the Gadget Flow Podcast, the show about everything related to products, entrepreneurship, marketing, and crowdfunding. This week, I got to chat with Paolo Gannis, and Paolo is the founder and CEO of Clary, and they create this super beautiful, smart, natural air purifier. It is very cool. And he's had a ton of success in crowdfunding in the past, and he gave us a ton of practical tips in this interview. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into this week's interview with Paolo Gannis. All right, I am here with Paolo. Paolo, how are you doing, man? I'm doing super well. How are you doing, Alex? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you for being on the podcast this week. We're stoked to have you. So for people who are listening who may not know who you are, can you give a little bit of background into what you do? Okay, so I'm Paolo Ganis. I'm uh, the CEO and co-founder at Clary. Uh, Clary is a company that... Um, creates, produces, and invents natural air purifiers. So our first air purifier was called Clary. It was a great success. We did our first Kickstarter campaign. went very well. And then we launched a month ago Natede, which is our second product. And we launched it also on uh, Kickstarter. And it was a, an even better success. So we're so happy about the performance. That is awesome, man. Yeah, Clary is a very, very beautiful, very cool product. Um, so we're excited to have you on to talk a little bit about it. But we know that you've done um, a few crowdfunding campaigns in the past, right? Yes, yes. So uh, we launched Clary in 2016 and we reached uh, $260,000. And now uh, we launched last month, uh, Natsede, and we reached almost $900,000. So we we did quite well. Very happy about it. Oh, man. Wow, that's awesome. So I want to jump into the details of all the crowdfunding. We have a bunch of questions for you regarding that. But first, I'd like to just get a little bit of your background. What what you did before Clary, what you did before getting into crowdfunding, what, what kind of led you there? Okay, so, uh, well, I started my career in uh, banking. So I've always been a big fan of uh, finance and I worked for five years in the corporate finance of a Fortune 50 company. It was great, but, you know, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. So all the time, all nights, all weekends, I was thinking about something to work on. And mm -hmm. then I started my activities. I found my partners that had this idea and we said, wow, this looks amazing. Let's, let's do something about it. And then, and then we started. We presented our first product at CS in Las Vegas in 2016. It was an incredible success. Everybody loved this product. And then we were spotted by uh, Plug and Play Ventures, which is one of the biggest accelerators in Silicon Valley. It has invested in Google, Dropbox, and other big companies. And uh, we did three months there. And the first thing we said was, well, uh, we must see that the market really loves the product. And, and there are people that want to pay for this product. And so we said, let's do a Kickstarter. And we did it and uh, with very low budget, but we did incredibly well. And so that, that was the beginning of everything. So the crowdfunding really gave us lots of resources uh, to start the production, get our first manufacturers. Um, and then, then we managed, we got a bit of other investments from uh, private investors that saw that we went so well on uh, Kickstarter. And so really it was something game changing, really. I, I would really recommend anybody that has a good idea, especially in hardware, to first do a good uh, crowdfunding campaign. Yes, that's, that's very, very interesting, man. So just out of curiosity, when you guys were considering, you know, when you're wanting to launch the product to a bigger, bigger audience and stuff. What about Kickstarter or more broadly, maybe crowdfunding? Like what opportunity did you see there that maybe wasn't there before? Like what, what pushed you to do, to do that? Well, um, 
Our product is um, very particular. So we're talking about uh, an, a flower pot, which is a natural air purifier. So we use the natural properties that some plants have. And so really, it was really difficult when we went to investors and manufacturers to tell them, hey, look, we've got this product. Can you help them? Can you help us and uh, give us funds and help us with manufacturing? And they really didn't believe us or think, wow, sounds interesting, but you must show me something more. And uh, that's what crowdfunding was for. So uh, we straight away went on Kickstarter because, uh, I mean, Kickstarter is very is very good for uh, design products because Claire is also proudly made in Italy design uh, object made in ceramics. So we straight away went for Kickstarter. And um, it was something really we, we straight away decided of because it was really the natural uh, thing to do in the first moments of our um, of our startup. So we should always say, let's go for Kickstarter. Let's see if there's somebody that want to pay for for our product. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense, man. So I'm curious, um, as I think most of the listeners are, I think that there's this theme where, um, and I'd like to hear the story from from your guys' perspective of you get a really good push in the beginning of your campaign and then you get another little push at the very end of your campaign. But how did you guys make uh, your campaign successful for the whole duration of the campaign? Like, did you, did you have strategy to that? How did you guys make the, make the campaign as a whole successful and not just have really big bumps in the beginning and end? Well, I think I think one of the most important thing is that when you do a crowdfunding campaign, especially a Kickstarter campaign, you really must work a lot before. So you must really um, have a great strategy. You must be really well organized. You, you don't launch a crowdfunding campaign uh, in two days. It really takes at least uh, two to three months in preparation for it. So. You must have all the right assets and, and everything. So it's something that takes time. And really, when you, when you do it, you must really get the most out of it because, I mean, you put in your face, you're showing your new product, and you really want to get the best out of it. So you must be, really be concentrated. So that's what we did. We really, really, really worked hard. And so we did created something that was nice uh, besides the product. So also the images, the copy, and the video was nice. And then uh, we really push a lot also marketing because now on Kickstarter is uh, it's really tough uh, to to show up uh, because there's I, I mean now on Kickstarter are probably three thousand live projects so you really must stand out in a in a nice way and you must push also a lot on marketing so it's really something that every day you must concentrate and do the best out of it and invest money in it on marketing and. Uh, and PR for sure. Yeah, definitely. So for that, like, what what services did you guys use? Did you use anything to help promote the the campaign when it was out? What did you guys do as far as helping market it? Well, one of the first thing and uh, is we use uh, Gadgetflow, uh, which we think is one of the um, the best uh, services because really, in terms of um, value for money, they they're just great because uh, they don't cost a lot and uh, they really, all, all the time they really um, uh, exceed our expectation because uh, we really get a lot of traffic and a lot of uh, pledges from Gadgetflow. So they, they really help us a lot and I, we think that it's really a must to be, on, to be featured by them so people, because people also trust Gadgetflow and they know that Gadgetflow reviews uh, uh, the best tech. So uh, I think it's something that everyone must consider when they launch a, a Kickstarter campaign. Definitely. Mm, that's awesome, man. <laughs> we appreciate that. Definitely. And then so, uh, and we agree, Gadgetflow is amazing to help crowdfunding campaigns. So um, did you do like, you, you also mentioned doing like paid ads for maybe social media. Did you do any of that like on Facebook? Oh yes, for sure. Uh, social media, we see Facebook works a lot, um, much better than AdWords. So uh, yeah, you have to invest a lot also on social media ads, especially on Facebook. We saw Instagram also works quite well. Which one works quite well? Sorry. Uh, Instagram. We see that it also oh, Instagram wow. works very well and it's quite cheap compared to 
Facebook and we see a lot of uh, traffic and uh, quite a good conversion rates that come from stories, Instagram stories, they cost very little and, uh, and well, especially because our product is something really that as you see it, you say, wow, what's, what's this? And so they, they, they work very well. Yes, definitely, definitely me. And your guys' product is so pretty. It just is very aesthetically pleasing. And I think that's a very big win for you on Instagram when people are, it's so image focused, you know, and you guys do have great photos and great, great content. So that's a lesson in and of itself. Have a, how to have a pretty product. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Alex. Thanks so much. Absolutely, man. So I'm curious, there is a lot of advice um, we hear a lot about crowdfunding campaigns and I'm curious what you would say maybe is the worst piece of advice you hear about crowdfunding campaigns that you would like to debunk for us. Ooh, the worst. Oh, yes. wow. that's, uh, <laughs> that's quite a question. Um, the worst, uh, I don't know. Probably the, the worst is I think, as I was saying before, I think, Sometimes when I speak with somebody that's launching a Kickstarter campaign, some of them just say, well, let me just launch the campaign and see how it goes. And I hope to make a million euro or dollars out of it. Uh, but I think that you must never believe people like that because really it takes time, effort, m investment. So really you must do it well and don't believe in people that just say, just launch the campaign and see if it goes well and just hope in it. Because it will, it will never go on its own. Or, it, I mean, this would have happened, I don't know, five or six years ago. But now it's impossible. It's just impossible. Yeah, absolutely. So with that in mind, what would you say um, maybe like the one or two most important things in your preparation in, that, in those first couple of months of getting your uh, campaign ready? What would you say the one or two things... That would be most important to hammer out and make sure are, are really, really um, planned and executed well. What would you say those top two things would be in order to have a great uh, campaign? Well, I think the, the, the most important thing is to get leads. Um, so um, really do a well-structured campaign. So in the, in the months that come before the, the, the actual launch of the campaign, really is to... Uh, create a landing page where you get leads and good leads. So you must spend quite a bit of money. So day one, when you launch the campaign, you've got to release 5,000 emails of people that are interested in your product, that you tease them about your product. And so on day one, they really want to buy that product. And I think that's one of the most important things. Another very important thing is probably every know, everybody knows it, but uh, I really want to say it again is the video. So we worked a lot in the video and especially in the, our last video, we, we really worked a lot and we're really happy about it because it's something unique and something that explains not only the product, but explains the team, the mission of our company. So it really tells a story and so it gets people to understand that there's somebody behind the product and that they must support you, not just because they like the product and they love the product and it's cool, but also because there's a nice startup that is working hard on it and must be supported. So I think that's very important to show in your video. Yes, I agree, man. I think like the the video um, that's being shared online, you cannot over over plan and over uh, over prepare to make that great because that is the real point of contact. Um, and one one thing I want to touch on real quick. So you you talked uh, the first part of that answer was getting leads. Do you have any practical advice on how to get, you know, you said around 5,000 leads. How, how do you get that going, like practically, when you're, when you're a fresh startup? Like, what would you suggest? So, well, I think, I think to get leads, it's quite, quite simple, but it, it, it can be tricky. So, something you must do is, for sure, a, a good landing page. So, a landing page where uh, you've got some images of your product, you, you show the best feature. You don't say too much. You, you just say the minimum so that people are, are interested in it and are teased about it. And um, really just a, a, a place where people leave their um, email. And I would suggest also to put a name and surname. So 
name, surname and email, because this means that who leaves your email, their email are really interested, because if you just leave the email, people just leave it like that, because um, maybe they're not interested, but it, we see that uh, leads that left also the name and surname are, are convert much better. And then uh, Facebook ads. So um, I would say um, a budget, well, depends how much time you've got, but at least a uh, uh, hundred or 200 U bucks uh, a day. And um, I say that a cost, cost for a good lead now is between, it could be around $2. So it's not even a lot for a good lead. Yeah, absolutely, man. I love that. So um, I think all that was really, really helpful. Great practical advice. Is there anything, you know, I'm thinking of like the an 18-year-old, 19-year-old person wanting to launch a campaign. Is there any last pieces of advice you'd give them before launching? Uh, well, uh, we covered a bit, quite a, a lot of experts, but yeah, do, do something, something wonderful. Do something that uh, really... Show that there are people behind this product. Show that you're working hard on it. Um, really uh, show this in your campaign and also in the, in the story of your campaign. So also in the copy, the images. I mean, it's never enough. So also in the story, you. I mean, the story part so where you can read and read, see the images. Uh, write as many things as you want because then they see the video and then if they want, they can go and check. Uh, so really, really... Put everything you want and and really start working on a Kickstarter campaign at least three months before you want to launch. And and when you do it, and really, I, I, I never stop telling this to everyone that reaches out and asks me advice. Really, if you're doing a Kickstarter campaign, really do it as best as you can. Invest as much as you can. I mean, it's a one shot and you cannot fail. So it's your face, your product. You're really trying to show something to the world. So... You must do it as best as you can, really. Love it. Paolo, thank you so much for being on the show, man. I mean, I think you, you gave a lot of awesome you know, wisdom and advice for, for all of us crowdfunding people who are wanting to, to launch a campaign in the near future. So where can people stay up to date with you and what you guys are doing at Clary? Where would you like people to head to connect with you online? Well, they can go on our website, so clary.com. They can leave our, uh, an email. We've got our contact um, sections. So, uh, or they can write to hello at clary.com and uh, we'll help them as best as we can and we'll give advice. We're re really always looking forward to give advice to people that want to launch a Kickstarter campaign. And I just love it, really. I just love helping people on this. Yes, absolutely, man. Well, I think you helped a lot of people today on the show. So, Paolo, thank you so much for being on, man. Thank you, uh, Alex. It was such a pleasure and an honor, really. Thanks. That was my interview with Paolo Gannis. So please make sure to go check out Clary and follow all the great stuff they're working on. Thank you so much for being on this week, Paolo. This podcast is made by Gadgetflow, and we are proud to be the number one platform to find new and awesome gadgets. So make sure to check out this site for all the new products we are curating every single day. We'll be back next week with another new episode. So in the meantime, please go rate and review our show on iTunes. Thank you so much for listening to the Gadget Flow podcast.